Good morning. Today we're going to be talking about the academic debate team members and what each of their jobs are within the team. First, we're going to talk about what your team is made up of, which is the team configuration. Now, you can have four to five team members on an academic debate team, but there are only four terms during a tournament. This means that one of the people, if there are five, will be the note taker slash question asker. Now, what do they have to do if they ask questions? Well, they need to make sure that they can ask a question to the other team that they will not be able to answer, which will make them not be able to make their argument as strong. It's important to choose wisely who's on your team because you want people who are going to be committed and hardworking so that you can have the best results. Another thing that's very important is that each team member makes sure that they can talk for exactly the amount of time that they are allowed within each term. You'll know the amount of time that each team member can take in the next slides. But it is important because if you are eight seconds past the timing or eight seconds short, after that, you'll be docked points in the debate. The first person to step out for the debate and represent your team is the introduction. The introduction is very important because it sets the scene for the debate tournament and it helps your team look great right from the start. The introduction has many jobs other than just representing the teams. During their presentation, they have four minutes to give an exordium, which is an example or um, physical representation of the situation that is being proposed in the debate. Second, they need to present all of the arguments that your team will be presenting. Now this could be two arguments or three arguments, and they need to provide just enough reasoning to make sense of the arguments so that the judge can get a good idea of what you're going to be developing in the later rebuttals. Lastly, they need to define important terms that will be used in the debate so that the judge can know that you are staying on topic and so that they can know what you're going to be debating in reality. How do you build these arguments? Well, you build them by reasoning and explaining why these are relevant within the context of the debate and giving examples that make sense. What is an example that makes sense? An example that is relevant, that is not far-fetched, and easily explained is the best to be used with a judge. You should know your arguments and reasonings by memory so that you can easily be flexible during your intervention. You have five minutes to speak, which means that if you're going to refute something, the other team's introduction or the other team's first rebuttal, depending on whether or not you are for or against in the debate, means you should probably use one minute to one minute and 30 seconds out of the five minutes and use the rest to really rebuild the arguments. When you're using evidence, you need to make sure that they are relevant, which means that they are from the United Nations, a scientific journal, etc. You can have a more rigid structure for your information in this rebuttal, as it won't change as much what you are going to say since you're mostly rebuilding your arguments. This does not mean, however, that they should be in paragraph form. The third team member to step out is the second rebuttal. And what does the second rebuttal do? This turn is mostly about knocking down the other team's argument and explaining why they are not sufficient reasoning for their position in the debate. This means that you are going to rebuttal their ideas and explain why their examples and their evidences are not correct. By doing this, you need to explain why it's bad or wrong. And think about dominoes. You need to explain why each thing influences the next and why it is fundamentally incorrect. You should spend half of your time rebutting the other team's arguments and the other half rebuilding your own arguments so that that is the last thing that the judge hears. A good review. Organize your work by argument and not in paragraphs. You want to be able to flexibly speak during your intervention. You have five minutes, just like the first rebuttal. Do not forget to support your information with sources while you are rebutting. It is important to still use sources from the UN, science journals, and relevant articles. If you are asked a question, quickly respond and go back. Do not lose any time. The fourth and final person to step out and represent your team is the conclusion. The conclusion has three minutes to do multiple jobs and it is quite important because it is the last thing the judge will hear from your team. The conclusion's job is to revise and summarize, which means that they need to pay attention during the entire debate and truly understand what each person is trying to say so that they can do a good revision.
No new information can be brought to the debate in the conclusion because otherwise the other team will not have a chance to rebuttal and that is not fair. It is important that if you're the conclusion, you make your team appear stronger and show the judge that your team had the better refute and the better points in the end. But you should show the opposing team credit when they do something good as well, such as answering a question or giving a good example. Again, it must be done in three minutes and you cannot pass the time. And you should probably bring the exordium full circle at the very end to finalize the debate and show the judge that you have built a well-rounded argument.